Hello everyone, I'm back with a video about books. What? Oh my gosh, Seiji. <laughs> yeah, so um, like I said in one of my older videos, I haven't really been reading as much because of life in general but I'm picking things up again and um, just in general I've for the most part only been reading um, the the classics that uh, I, I read with like my uh, patrons but um, yeah I'm slowly starting to read other things outside of that as well so very excited for that but anyway today I wanted to talk about a book that I actually read quite a while ago uh, last year I think back in August something like that it's this classic uh, from Uruguay it's called The Decapitated Chicken and Other Stories and it was written by Horacio Quiroja I uh, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly and it was um, translated by Margaret Sayers Peden and uh, yeah, she also selected uh, the, the stories that are included in this one. I believe that this is one of two uh, short story collections that have been translated from the Spanish to the English um, that are available of uh, Quiroja. So yeah, there's another one and I'll leave a link to that in uh, the description box. So yeah before i i get into this book i actually wanted to talk about the author because uh, a lot of his life uh, has influenced his writing and so um, it's cool to learn about that as well so kiroha was a uruguayan playwright poet and short story writer and now in latin america he is known mainly for his short and creepy horrific stories and I actually spoke to a couple of people from Latin America and they said that some of his work was actually required reading for them in school and that some of these stories um, really scarred them <laughs> so you know there's that Anyway, despite his large readership in Latin America, he is not very well known amongst English readers. And um, like I said, you can see that in the amount of work uh, of his that is available in English. Um, so you have uh, the two short story collections in print. Then you have one short story collection called Jungle Tales, which is uh, targeted to its children, I believe. Um, it's available on the Gutenberg website. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And there's like a handful of short stories as well um, plastered all over the internet. So I'll put everything in the, in the description box. But um, yeah, he wrote so, so many um, short stories. So hopefully in the future, more of his work will um, be translated to the English. So Kiroha was born on the 31st of December in 1878. And from the start of his life, he was actually played with so many unfortunate events that often involved death like uh, for instance uh, the death of his father just a couple months after him being born his father had fired his gun by mistake causing a self-inflicted gun wound to which he succumbed after this his mother actually remarried however when Kiroha was a teenager his stepfather who was suffering from an illness committed suicide. Then in his early 20s Kiroha was trying to teach um, his best friend how to shoot a gun and accidentally killed him. Then after that Kiroha actually got married however his first wife committed suicide and then he ended up marrying one of the friends of his daughter. Yes and then in his 50s he was diagnosed with terminal prostate cancer and he decided to end his own life by drinking a cyanide solution and so it's safe to say that Kiroha's life was just filled with darkness death 
and a lot of misery and that really translated into his work and you can see this in even just the major themes because um, a lot of his work concerns death and mental illness but also animals and that is because Kiroha loved the jungle and he actually spent a substantial amount of his uh, life living in the Argentinian jungle and that's also uh, one of the reasons as to why his wife was very depressed because she did not like the jungle life at all. Anyway, um, you'll see in a lot of stories that uh, animals are either the the main character where you're um, seeing the story or, or you're following along in the story from their perspective or they um, play a huge part uh, of it in another way. So if you want to know what kind of style Kiroha had as a writer, um, I would say think of Edgar Allan Poe. Um, he was actually one of Kiroha's biggest influences. Also, if you enjoy works from people such as uh, Gabriel García Márquez or Julio Cortázar, um, then you'll probably also enjoy uh, Kiroha's work because uh, both authors were heavily influenced uh, by him. So yeah, just for those people who are looking for like, I don't know, some adjacent work, so to speak. Anyway, I personally really enjoyed this short story collection. There were definitely stories out there that I enjoyed more than others. And I think that's also because of course, this is, uh, this piece is a product of its time and so there are things in there such as ableism so in particular if you are very sensitive towards that uh, then I would say avoid uh, the titular short story the decapitated chicken because um, yeah that that one uh, was was quite quite a lot to, to take in Anyway, I really did like the selection that uh, Peden chose because it's like a, a, a wide uh, array of types of stories. Um, you have like these weird horror ones, then you have these um, that are kind of like playing with you um, mentally. I'll, I'll get into that later. And you also have stories that are centered around the the jungle and so you really get a good uh, feel of uh, Kiroha's writing like the 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 types of stories uh, that that he wrote and uh, yeah it was just very varied and I think that um, putting the feather pillow at the the start of the collection really set the, the tone because it's centered around this woman who um, slowly becomes weaker and weaker and weaker and she's essentially wasting away in her bed and no one knows what's going on and at the end of the story I won't I won't spoil it but at the end of the story you you find out what's going on and it's so horrifying if um um, <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure for specific people who who do not like specific things, um, like me, <laughs> it, I, I'm not spoiling it. But oh my gosh, when I read that, I was absolutely mortified. It, it's giving me chills now, and that was really the moment when I understood why people said that they were scarred because I can imagine me. 10 year old Seiji having to read this for school and just being so freaking creeped out about it so um yeah I'm glad I, I I'm reading this as an adult instead so a lot of the horror in these stories are either based in reality or something reality adjacent such as not being able to tell whether or not something is an illusion or reality and 
that's something that can happen to all of us because of course like our brains can deceive us and so that's something that makes some of these stories very scary like i said previously uh, some of these stories are set in the jungle and that is just the perfect place for a horror story right because there's just so much stuff there that you you just don't know you hear different sounds you you see different creatures and literally anything in a jungle can kill you <laughs> i don't know why that's funny <laughs> but it's so dangerous <laughs> like <laughs> i i'm like such a domesticated person that i can't imagine even entering a jungle i would be absolutely scared like even camping for me is like a lot so like the setting of the jungle gets really really <laughs> scary very quickly um so yeah that's perfect anyway uh going back to what i said with regards to illusions and mental health there's this one story that um has stuck with me um up till now and it's called the pursued so the main character of this story accidentally is called Horacio and he spends time at his friend's place who is called Lujones and uh, Leopoldo Lujones was actually a uh, friend of his who was also a uh, writer from Argentina and you know having this information sort of adds this auto fictional dimension to the story and it grounds it more in reality because it's like okay it, it feels like Horacio is actually just writing about an experience he has had himself now at some point Lujones leaves the room and that is when Lucas starts uh, telling Horacio about uh, this boy who had a mental illness in which he thought that he was being pursued by someone or some type of entity and that resulted in very abnormal uh, behavior and eventually the boy was able to overcome that episode in his life. Now after some more time Lucas leaves and Horacio tells Lujones about uh, the story that Lucas told him and that is when Lujones says well um, that boy was actually Lucas he was talking about himself and that's what sparks Horacio's um, interest in this man and he tries to uh, track him down because he's interested in talking to him um, however he doesn't manage to find him but one day he's just walking on the street and he sees Lucas so what does he do he starts pursuing him so <laughs> he he just starts walking behind him and just just walking but behind him and just following him and so now um this this thing that lucas thought as a boy that he was consistently being pursued now he's actually being pursued and Horacio is just being super weird about it and people who are walking on the street are noticing what Horacio is doing and they're just like what the heck is this this dude doing and <laughs> it just gets su super weird and eventually um lucas turns around and uh sees that Horacio has been following him and eventually they end up deciding to go to a cafe um where it gets even weirder we sat for a while without speaking, but the flags of excitement were constantly buzzing through my brain. Although I felt serious, a convulsive smile kept rising to my lips. When we had sat down, I had bitten my lips trying to adopt a normal expression, but this overwhelming tick kept breaking through. My ideas rushed headlong in an unending procession, piling onto one another with undreamed-of velocity. 
Each idea represented an uncontrollable impulse to create ridiculous and, especially, unexpected situations. I had a mad desire to undertake each one, then stop suddenly and begin another. To poke my forked fingers in Diaz Velez's eyes, to pull my hair and yell just for the hell of it, and all just to do something absurd, especially to Diaz Velez. And it's just like super weird. Um, first of all, I just have to confess because de- don't we all have those moments where we're just having like these weird ideas in our head? Like for instance, when it's very silent in a place um, <laughs> and, and you're just like, oh, what would happen if I s- say something really weird or something really um inappropriate right now or I screamed or I just dropped to the floor do something like really out of the ordinary uh, so that that I felt a, a bit re- uh, like relatable not anything like putting a fork in someone's eye but you know <laughs> it was just really weird and it, it was that type of like weirdness that you also felt when Horacio was following him he's like oh what if I would be doing this or if I do that so I thought that that was very um weird to to read that type of like um I don't know not mindset but those type of ideas and the very gruesome one of like poking someone's eyes out and it's that kind of like weird vibe that is persistent throughout uh, the story and what intensifies that is the fact that uh, how how would you say this delusion and reality blur like the lines between them are non-existent because for me when I'm thinking about this story, I, I think about what what does this do to, to a, a human being, right? Because you have Lucas who has had this, um, th- this, this delusion that he is consistently being pursued. And now all of a sudden you have Horatio coming in and he's like, hmm, let me make those delusions reality. And all of a sudden it's like okay is lucas now justified N- now like like now he can say like look i'm actually being pursued and i don't know it's just such, such a mind screw and i think that's the reason why uh it's like for me the most memorable story and why i it's still just kind of like all of, out of nowhere just pops up in my mind and i I start breaking my brain over that whole uh, question. Um, But besides all of that, it is also the story in which you can see uh, the most of Poe's influences. Uh, And that is also because it almost feels like a retelling of uh, Poe's The Man in the Crowd. And that's a story about a nameless narrator who follows a man through the the crowds of of London. So um, there's that. If you'd like to, I think it would be fun to like read both of the stories and and compare them. And yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say with regards to the decapitated chicken and other stories. Um, I still have a review uh, for Japanese tales of mystery and imagination. Um, So I wrote both of these reviews uh, back in June last year. So I'm really trying to push out all of the old videos that I've just finished writing, but just haven't found the time to to film. So stay tuned for that. If you want a notification for that, um, subscribe and hit the bell button. And uh, what's more, yeah, I... I have a couple of other horror stories from all over the world, both contemporary and um, classics. Uh, I have some Polish horror, um, some more Japanese horror and um, some Thai contemporary horror as well. So um, yeah, like this video if you liked it. I think I already said that. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in another video. Also, if you would like to support me, you can by either donating a coffee or joining my patron. And the nice thing about my patron is that from the first tier, which is $1, 
you uh, get to join my Discord where I talk about so much stuff, any anything from knitting, skating, anime, manga, books, um, and also um, my book club is included as well. So it's a classics book club. Um, every month we come together, we pick a book to read and um, yeah, we just discuss it over Discord. And then at the end of the, the month, we have like um, an online book discussion together, um, which is always loads of fun. So um, if you're interested in that, links to everything in the description box below. And yes, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in another video. <laughs>